dubscupseries.com. You know, nostalgia is a weird thing and a powerful thing. For all the great races and moments at the Martinsville Speedway in Ridgeway, Virginia, one that will always be special to me is the 2014 Spring Cup race, the STP 500. While overshadowed by its fall counterpart later that season, the 2014 Martinsville Spring Race is a forgotten gem, in my opinion, and a race I had circled to talk about when I first started this series. So first, the nostalgia part. Why am I so nostalgic for this race? Well, it was one of the last races I watched in my childhood Arkansas home before moving houses, and in general, I'm just really nostalgic for the 2014 season. So with that little ditty out of the way, let's talk about the race itself. At 1.13 Eastern Time, bring back one Eastern Star Times NASCAR, the green flag flew over the field of 43 cars on a cloudy Virginia afternoon day. It was an all-JGR front row as Kyle Busch sat on the pole with hometown kid Denny Hamlin to his outside. And what would turn out to be a trend for Martinsville during the 2014 Cup Series season, the caution flew early and often, this time occurring on lap number two for a spin by Martin Truex Jr., who would go on to have a horrific 2014 season before blossoming into a NASCAR legend, and he's still one of the best drivers out there today. However, a big incident about 40 laps later set the tone for the rest of the race, as Kurt Busch got into Brad Keselowski, with Keselowski feeling that Busch, quote, completely drove through him, unquote. The feud between Keselowski and Bush continued, with Keselowski intentionally hitting and putting some tire marks on Bush and flipping Kurt the old number one finger a couple times. After many more cautions and a few pit road incidents, even one involving Brad Keselowski, which essentially took him out of race win contention, the first real strategy move of the race was pulled up by Dale Jr. about halfway through. Who, Jr., who was started in the back, needed something to vault him to the top of the field. However, Junior was not only able to grab onto the lead, grab, grab the lead, but hang on to it for a little while as well. Hendrick was proving that they were improving as the race went on, as defending champ Jimmy Johnson came up to the lead. After some more cautions, the race actually seemed to mellow out a bit, with uh, there actually being a little bit of a green flag run and laps in between cautions. Clint Boyer and Jimmy Johnson had now also worked their way to the front of the pack. But the beaten and battered and bruised 41 Stuart Haas racing car was not backing down. And as, Kerb, and as the laps wound down, Kerb was able to reel in Jimmy Johnson, passing him with 11 laps to go. However, with two laps to go, the battle wasn't done yet. And out of the way, not a factor, thank goodness. Bush and Johnson now two and a half car lengths apart, but still not free of race traffic. No, but they're, they're everybody's doing a great job of getting out of their way. They see Kurt coming, they're giving him the room. White flag in the air for Kurt Busch. Jimmy is two car lengths back. How many races is this? Six. six. How many winners is this? It's going to be six, it looks like. Back straight away, final time. Cole went ahead, Michael Annette, Jamie McMurray. Johnson is to the back bumper of Kurt Busch, but they power off turn number four, and the outlaw wins the battle at Martinsville. And Stuart Haas, really, Gene Haas. Here in Virginia, and down there for the celebration is Christopher. The victory pose on top of the car. Now, if that's not an outlaw move, I don't know what is. To say Kurt Busch is excited about his 25th career win would be an understatement. Not just because, as he gets a kiss from his girlfriend, Patricia, 
to say you would be excited would be an understatement because not only is this your 25th career win, but the way you won holding off Jimmy Johnson at Martinsville. I didn't know if we'd be able to do it. You know, the 48 car is king here. Him or the 24. And this is that old theory, can't beat him, join him. And I have a Hendrick chassis prepared by Stuart Haas Racing. Hendrick Motor, thanks to those guys at Chevrolet. I've been on this journey for a while, and every time you come to Martinsville, you just kind of draw a line through it. Like, there's no way I'll be able to challenge those Hendrick guys or be up in that top 10. This Stuart Haas team gave me a car to do it. Now I know what I need to do on Saturdays. Don't even practice. Just show up and race on Sunday. That way I won't dial out the car. But thanks to Monster Energy, these guys have been wonderful the last two years. We have great associates with Mobile One, Atlas Copco. It's just a, it's a dream come true to have Gene Haas call you and tell you that he wants you to drive. He wants to go for trophies and wins. And it's just an unbelievable feeling to deliver for Haas Automation. So thanks to all the Haas CNC employees. Kurt, let's go back to the beginning of the race. You had the incident with Brad Keselowski. At that point, you said on the radio, we're done. If this is done, this is pretty good. Did that fuel the fire? We won. We're not worried about any of that nonsense right now. We are a winner. We are not guaranteed in chase, but we got to win and we're moving forward. So thanks a lot to everybody on this team. I just can't thank them enough. And we'll have state water heaters with us on the car later on this year, but it's all about Haas Automation. All right. Thanks, Kurt. Congratulations. Wow, what a win. Matt Yoakum? Overall, I feel as if this race deserves more credit for how good the racing, action, and many rivalries, especially the one between Kurt Busch and Brad Kozlowski, was. While it might not have while it might not have the grandeur of being a chase race like its fall counterpart, it was still an exciting instant filled race that brings me great memories every time I watch it. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and share the video and the channel with your family, friends, or anyone you know who likes NASCAR. I'm Samuel Stubbs from SubscribeSeries.com. Thank you for watching. God bless. Peace out. Bye. Subscribe. Here's a point. 7,000 RPM. Where everything fades. The machine becomes weightless disappears and all that's left is a body moving through space and time 7,000 RPM that's where you need it you feel it coming it creeps up on you close in your ear